Look at these names as setting up for Monday, guys. And again, we'll get to the individual pivots from Friday. Look at NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA is about to go. Look at team, right? Look at team. Team is about to go, right? Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Hope everybody is doing well. Welcome to another uh, edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is doing well. Usually I record, um, you know, I record the videos sometimes uh, in the afternoon, sometimes in the weekends. It is early. I couldn't sleep last night. God knows why, but it is early. It's seven o'clock and it's a little bit uh, right before eight o'clock in the morning. I've been up since six thirty. I said, you know what? Let me knock out my charts while everybody's asleep. You know, hopefully I'll go through a lot of charts. And it took me about five minutes to do my um, my prep work for Monday. We'll get to that in a second. That's a good thing. That's a really really good thing. So let's talk about the markets. Crazy sloppy first three days, right? If you've been watching this video for for the past week. You know how completely erratic it was. If you remember last week, uh, we had the first two days of the week very, very tight contracting channels, which is not a good thing, right? Especially when you're, you're an active intraday trader, you're looking for ideas, and the most important part is range, right? The most, more range you have, uh, the better, you know, the better opportunity of uh, succeeding. So the first two days of last week was incredibly tight. And then it got really, really aggressive, right? If you guys remember towards the end of the week. This week was different, right? The first three days of the week was just a sloppy, choppy um, circle jerk, right? I think that's the nicest way of saying it without offending anybody. So let's kind of review, right? If you look at, um, if you look at the final tallies for the week, you're not going to really get a sense unless you were actively participating in the market uh, on a daily basis. You're not going to get a sense. Uh, all the indexes finished... Uh, about 1%, a little less than 1% uh, to the downside. And it doesn't really mean anything when you're looking at it on the surface, but if you did trade it, right? If you did trade the first uh, three days, you understand why it was nuts. Uh, you had Monday, right? Monday, you had a test of this rising uh, short-term support. Bulls kind of gave up control and then took it right back. The next day, they gave back, they took control, the bulls uh, took, excuse me, bears took control, you can see it's a little early. Uh, bears took control, took out the previous day's low, only to reclaim again and started rallying. So bears and bulls kept on getting trapped basically at the bottom of the range uh, for the first couple of days. Then on the third day, we finally took out three days of, three days of selling, gap down, right? Gap down, trapped the bulls that, bought back the red to green, trapped the bears that shorted the bottom of the channel and took the market higher, right? Took the market higher. We then opened up lower and then went back higher. And then Friday came along and the market finally did very, very uh, aggressive things and took out literally uh, three days worth of selling to reclaim not only the five day moving average, but the 10 day again. We'll get to that. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, so it was a crazy sloppy week. Uh, one of the first three days was one of the just the just insane. Like I, I haven't seen the first three days like this for the you know probably and I said this in the webinar seven eight nine years right how sloppy it was. But then slowly but surely we kind of talk about this all the time why it's important to use the word patience right. And again unfortunately if you're trading only for two three years the word patience. It's like the word, you know, it's like the word Mars. You heard about Mars, you know, maybe one or two things about Mars, but you really don't know anything about Mars. And it's no fault to your own, right? There is really not no fault to your own. It's like, again, if you, you know, all of us who've been driving for what, 30, 40 years, right? You can go down a highway, zone out, and you can literally drive four hours and you're not even gonna realize you're not even looking at the road. You're used to it, right? You, you feel comfortable behind the wheel. If you're a brand new driver, 14, 15 years old, excuse me, 15. If you're, if you're 17, 18 years old, although you think you know how to drive, you really don't, right? You've been driving for like three seconds and it's, it, it's a highly likely scenario that you're going to do a lot worse damage to yourself in that vehicle than somebody who's been driving three, 30, 40 years 
They could go on cruise control. So it, it's it's very, very important to understand. You will use the word patience, but you kind of don't know what it is yet. And that's okay. Remember that. That's okay. Every trader has gone through that. Every trader continue to be coming in after you. will go through it. And everybody eventually realizes that time is going to be your best uh, your best asset, your best teacher. Okay, you can't teach yourself time. Okay, there's nothing you could do, but time will cure all your ailments. Okay, the FOMO, right? The FOMO part, the risk management part, um, just being more of an adult, being more mature. Everything is will handle it in time, so don't worry about that. But unfortunately, the first three days of the week, if you didn't use patience, right, and actually understand what the word patience meant. To wait for that really good hand to play out, you got you got hit. You got absolutely hit because the market went up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. You had Afghanistan, you had China, uh, you had Afghanistan news, you had China news, you had um, you had the Delta variant news. It, it was all over the place. And the one thing that we know when you have a market sensitive cycle and there's you know and there is a lot of uncertainty, market does not like uncertainty. And then kind of. Thursday came around and you started seeing some really good setups start to pop up, right? Out of nowhere, you had Netflix kind of wake up here. And this was, and in a weird way, this was the leader, right? This was the first one who kind of woke up, right? Took out this whole uh, 26 level, 31 level, and then just, just really, really exploded. And then slowly but surely, you had Microsoft wake up, right? Really had this one big engulfing candle took out three days of selling and set up for the next day which was friday again we'll get to individual pivots in a second but you started seeing something on thursday that we didn't see monday through wednesday you saw orderly market structure and that's the bottom line okay monday when you see stocks do this that's not market structure again i, I you know there's there's a big difference between average to range of a stock than volatility, right? I, I think, especially a lot of new traders, they use the word, we love volatility. No, 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 nobody loves volatility, okay? Volatility is unpredictable. Uh, volatility is very sporadic. Volatility will take a good setup and make you stop out prematurely because again, it's volatile. What new traders are referring to is average true range. And the great part about um, trading beta names, which basically are technology names with the highest average true range, you are getting that expansion, okay, without the volatility. So, for example, Tesla probably throughout throughout the day has a sixteen seventeen dollar average true range. Um, a name like, for example, Facebook throughout the day probably has five six seven dollars of range throughout the day. That's not volatility. That's average true range. So when you take the volatility and you put it on the table, a name like Facebook will go up and down, up and down, up and down. That's not what you want. You want orderly structure. You want a channel to be tested. You want a channel to be confirmed without 16 moves going up and down, up and down, up and down. And that was the first thing we saw come Thursday. We saw a lot of names started getting organically into their channels embracing that channel, confirming it, and then next thing you know, you're going to the next area of supply. And that was super duper important. This is why we, we continue to emphasize the point, do not trade when you don't have that edge. Do not trade when you're having macro, either economic, political, right, or global news issues that are staring you right in the face that even though the setup could be good on the surface, all these other extremities and outside forces could really do a lot of damage to your account. And worse than that, you're, you're burning mental equity trying to figure it out when you can't figure it out because there's outside forces that are controlling the macro trade. So I, I think what this week really showed, and Friday was super aggressive, we'll get to the pivots in a second. What really this week showed, and it, it really, especially, especially for you new traders, it, it should really finally, you know, press the issue in your subconscious and really write it down on the sticky note. You don't need to trade every day. I, again, we, we say this every day, and I don't care how good the market is. If it doesn't feel right to you, to your experience level, to your account size, to your pain threshold, or anything 
uh, another 3,000 moving parts that's built in a trader's DNA can just get out of the way, okay? It, it's not a sign of weakness, okay? Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, if you've decided not to trade because, again, referring to that sloppy, uh, you know, sloppy uh, love, you know, sl sloppy love interest crush that you have that potentially could throw up on you, there's no reason just to get, kind of get out of the way. Again, it's not a sign of of being weak okay this isn't a, a, a penis measuring contest to your friend on social media this is your hard-earned money right you're, you're laying down hard-earned money so if you're trading for 20 minutes 20 weeks or 20 years your money is as green as everybody else's so you want to make sure your money is as safe as possible and hopefully come back with some more friends before you put it on the table so the idea that you have to be in everything every single day and there's a quote unquote and i say this all the time um, there's always an opportunity somewhere. Yeah, maybe there's somewhere there's an opportunity somewhere, but that might not reflect your process. And that's a very, very important note. So the idea of patience, where it works, okay? The, the idea of being mature, it works. And the idea that you're only trading because you're getting value, not because the market is open, should be your only your absolutely only reason to be putting down your hard-earned money so going into this week let's let's talk about the indexes uh really quickly uh we are set up for monday um you know for all you guys who haven't charted yet just go through the nasdaq 100 i promise you it'll take you five minutes i'll give you guys some ideas for monday it will take you five minutes if the market uh does what it, i think it should be doing on monday you know we should be close to getting back to all-time highs we took out on Friday's bar, we took out one, two, three days worth of selling, reclaimed not only the five, but the 10 day moving average. So we reclaimed the shortest point, uh, shortest point of market emphasis, which is the five day moving average. And we reclaimed the 10 day, which is the birth of the trade. And if you watched uh, any of our workshops, and again, by the way, guys, if you are interested in uh, pivots, right? If you're just interested in pivots, we have a three hour, completely free masterclass uh, at somewhere at this link or that link, whatever it is. Um, just click on it. It's, it breaks down the theory in three hours. Uh, again, is pivots for everybody? No, they're not. Uh, but if, if you are interested in pivots, click on it. It's like three hours uh, and it really explains exactly what I do uh, and the moving parts and the hundreds of thousands of moving parts uh, behind these pivots and why they are uh, so pretty cool. But to kind of go back into the theory uh, of why I like the market, we took out three days uh, worth of selling in one day, and we are starting to get really aggressive macro setups from Monday. And if you look at what happened this week, you had Microsoft absolutely break out, Netflix uh, absolutely break out. But the cool part about it is, remember, when indexes take over a certain area, because if you guys remember what happened on the queues on May the 20th, right? May the 20th was very important because we reclaimed the 50 day moving average. And remember, not everything started going up that day. It takes time. So now that we reclaim the five and the 10 day moving average, yes, the stocks that led Netflix, Microsoft, they already broke out. But here's the cool part about it is there's a lot of names. And if you go through the NASDAQ 100, uh, there's a lot of names that are about to break out that are very, very imminent. So unless the market throws us a curveball with some crazy news, and again, it's 8 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. I don't know what's going to happen over the weekend. But unless the market you know, comes out with some crazy bad macro news, look at these names as setting up for Monday, guys. And again, we'll get to the individual pivots from Friday. Look at NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA is about to go. Look at team, right? Look at team. Team is about to go, right? Really good looking setups. Uh, look at Etsy. It broke out on Friday. We've been talking about Etsy for a couple of days. Look at Etsy. Finally got above, right? Finally got above this 150 days moving average that has been rejected several times. This thing has room all the way up to 210, 212. This thing looks really really good so we're set up folks look at the 60 minute channels even if you're not looking at the daily look at the 60 minute channels on some of these names and you tell me why you don't have to overthink for friday right look at apple look how close apple is to breaking out of this channel right look how tight this is uh look at a name like facebook right this is just i mean you can literally go look look at facebook look how tight on facebook right um, look at look at square like look at these look how tight these channels are so we're set up folks like a lot of times 
Um, you know, a lot of times throughout the year, you know, I, I always say, look, we have to play devil's advocate. Um, you know, we have to look at every single part of the market. And sometimes you just don't need to overthink. So the only question is, can we confirm, right? Can we confirm Friday's price action? Can't we uh, finally put ourselves in a situation that everything gets pulled up and now we are running to back to all time highs again? Is there a curveball? Is there kind of like a but if maybe? Yeah, of course. We still have, what, a couple of weeks left. Uh, people are on vacation, although the weather this week is not going to be great. Uh, we still have people are on vacation this week. And are you going to have pockets throughout the week that are going to be slow? Absolutely. But just remember, and this is, again, this is why you put it into your uh, into your mental uh, subconscious Rolodex. Remember, you know, remember those days of a tight that are not tradable? Just don't trade them. Wait for those premium hands. And that's exactly what we caught on Thursday and Friday was an absolute just 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 explosion of technology. So let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about uh, Friday again. We're set up for the week, but let's talk about some pivots from Friday. Um, Nvidia, right? Let's start off Nvidia. Nvidia needs to build that 200. Got rejected twice pre-market. Here is Nvidia, and again, you, you see these channels, right? You see how it's up against the 60-minute supply, and I just showed you guys a couple of examples. Now look at Nvidia from Friday. Oops, e-signal still hasn't fixed. <clears throat> still hasn't fixed e-signal, but I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about, right? So you see all these channels, all these channels I just showed you for Apple, for Facebook, for Square, for you know a whole bunch of stuff. Same thing, right? This is what we talk about the sneaky pivots. Nobody's looking at these channels. So here is 200. Here is 200. Nvidia took out 200, just absolutely exploded. Uh, closed almost at 209, and now we're setting up for all-time highs. On the video, any dip on the video, any dip on the video for Monday into rising <clears throat> 60 minute support needs to be bought because if this thing goes red to green and confirms weekly, this thing has a lot of room up. So uh, definitely, definitely keep an eye on the video uh, for this week. Uh, Peloton, I'm still watching. Uh, obviously, never confirmed to the downside 107. Uh, we talked about Robinhood setup on Thursday, 44 if it builds below, can flush. Um, I didn't have a locate for it, so I didn't really trade it. Uh, if you did have a locate for it and you did trade it, great job. 44 of builds below can flush more. Here was Robinhood, right? Here was Robinhood. So it took out the 44 and went all the way down to uh, 42 and a half, pretty much closed at the lows. I still think this thing goes lower. Um, Beyond never got to the 14. Grom, I still like the stock. Guys, watch this little one, G-R-O-M. Uh, 330 needs to build. Keep an eye on this thing. For all you guys who train these little ones, this thing is just kind of going sideways. Any close over 330, you can see, especially these smaller, smaller crazy names, this thing could really wake up. Keep an eye on this thing for this week. Uh, Microsoft just went absolutely bananas. When was the last time you saw, have you seen Microsoft act this really, really well? Uh, 299 needs to build for that 300 test plus. Not only three, I mean 300. This thing just went bananas. Uh, Microsoft took out that whole tier. Look at this whole channel here. It took out this whole 99 just went nuts. It went all the way uh, to 306. It looks higher. Again, another name that needs to be bought into dips, into the rising 60-minute support. They keep on trapping uh, eager shorts that, you know, quote-unquote says the stock is too high. Really? Microsoft is too high? You're chasing stocks from 2 to 36 and Microsoft is too high? Anyway, um, yeah, so big, big move there. So here is the channel on Tesla. Uh, I, we caught the only pivot of the day on Tesla. For, here's the early notes. Again, we had the whole AI conversation. I go look for all of you guys for, who are watching Tesla this morning. Please understand it's going to be very aggressive because of the AI event. I didn't know. I really didn't read uh, the whole notes about AI. I'm sure it was cool. All right. And there was no reason to read it. Uh, battery days sold off aggressively. Doesn't mean it will, it will translate the same thing today. If you are planning to trade, uh, Tesla cut down, you know, cut it down size uh, and on both sides of the market. Again, this was the only pivot of the day. Uh, Tesla 688 needs to build for experienced traders only for initial cash flow 696, which is obviously going to be the big macro focus going forward. Uh, is me also very important. I'll put in downside channels if it plays out that way as well. So nice. I mean, this was the first pivot of the day. Uh, nice trade here on Tesla. Here is the whole. 88 channel went right to uh, 92 supply. So really, you know, again, this was supposed to be for cash flow, uh, and then you're starting to see this macro cycle. But uh, to give Tesla credit, it didn't sell off either, and it really closed in the middle of the channel. So going into next week, you know, I'm, I'm I don't have a bias for Tesla. Um, I'm watching the upside here if it could reclaim 10, and I'm watching the downside here if it could uh, if it 
can closes below uh, the 200. So I'm not really, I don't have a bias on Tesla yet. I'd like to see a little more evidence, but again, nice low cash flow uh, to start the day. Uh, Netflix has been an absolute monster. If you guys remember from Friday, the 531 pivot, 545 sneaky area for experienced traders needs to build, got rejected three times pre-market. Netflix went bananas, right? Went absolutely bananas as well. So here is the 531 from Thursday. Here is the 5.45, right? This whole sneaky pivot area here, 5.45 from Friday, and it went to uh, 5.51, nice push there uh, as well. You can see how aggressive uh, these channels were from Friday. Uh, UPST, I still like it. Guys, watch this UPST. Had a big, big run. It tested 192 twice now. Keep an eye on this UPST. Check this out, right? Look at this daily chart on UPST. I'm not saying it's, it's going to, but, but hey, look, you see how many times it's gotten defended, 92, 92, 92. If this thing starts building 92, it uh, could get hit. Again, you always want to have some long, some shorts. Uh, NVIDIA explosion, 200 needs to build, rejected twice pre-market. Again, went to 209. Uh, huge move there. Again, take on the way up for Tesla. Obviously, take on the way up. Uh, for uh, for Netflix, uh, Amazon, you know, Amazon didn't flush, but it's super duper weak. Okay, uh, thirty one eighty for bills below can flush. Didn't flush, right? Didn't flush. The market held it up, but you know, Amazon is weak. Okay, Amazon went down to you know, like thirty one seventy five. But you can see, it just can't get out of its own way until it reclaims the five day moving average. There's no reason to look at Amazon as a long. So just kind of we'll wait this one out, but it continues to be uh, continues to be sold into strength. Uh, Microsoft next supply 302 went to 306. Uh, mRNA not a big move, only went down a couple of points. Uh, RBLX uh, didn't didn't trigger. Etsy we talked about Etsy for a couple of days. Uh, 197.50, 198 needs to build. Etsy closed uh, at the highs, uh, 199 and change. I still think this thing goes higher. Uh, has room. It looks like it has room to like 206, 207. Uh, as you can, you can tell, very, very busy. 550s pushing on Netflix. Uh, Hood 43 on deck went to 42 and change. Uh, and then, you know, fantastic, right? I mean, so fantastic value the last couple of days. Um, I am very, very optimistic for, for Monday. But again, I'm also not naive. I understand that anything could happen. I understand a lot of people are on vacation. But the most important part is I have my game plan ready, I have my research right in front of me. Now the only thing we need to do is wait for confirmation. Guys, have a great uh, blessed weekend. Hope everybody is happy. Hope everybody is healthy, stay, stays healthy, and continue to be blessed. Guys, have a great weekend. I'll see you all on Monday.